So, with the second season of the Vs. the World series finished, Canada vs. the World, I was wondering which country did the best in both of these seasons. We'll do two rankings here. First, we will use the actual Queen's placement on the season to measure which country on average made it the furthest, and then we'll use the PP score system to measure which country did the best in the competition overall. There obviously will be spoilers, so if you want to avoid that, click off the video. Firstly, for the placement ranking, we need to agree about 3rd and 4th placements on the season, since Baga, Juju, Rita and Victoria all placed there. There are a couple of ways we can resolve this. We could make the loser of the first lip sync 4th and the second one 3rd, we could compare their PPE scores, or make the loser of the lip sync against the winner 3rd and the other one 4th. However, since we will be calculating averages here, I think it's alright if we just place each of them as 3.5, since the average is gonna have a decimal numbers either way. With that being said, the calculation is pretty simple. We take a sum of the placements of each queens from a country, and then divide it by the number of queens there are. So let's do this with the last place in country, Canada. Canada has 6 queens competing in their 2 seasons. Those queens are Lemon, Jimbo, Kendall Gender, Stephanie Prince, Isis Couture, and Rita Baga, who placed 9th, 7th, 9th, 8th, 6th, and 3rd slash 4th respectively. When we divide the sum of that by 6, we get the average of 7.083, where the 3 is the recurring decimal. I don't think anyone is surprised to see that Canada did quite poorly here. Canada has so far the most queens out of any country, with 6, but since almost all of them were eliminated in the first half of the competition, it does explain poor showing on this ranking. The next 3 countries have had only one contestant each representing their country, and those countries are New Zealand, Thailand and Holland in that order, represented by Anita Wiglet. Vangina Hills and Janie Jacquet, respectively. Since each of these countries only have one queen each, that queen's placement is equal to the country's overall placement. So, for New Zealand it is 7, Thailand 6, and Holland 5. I do hope in the future we'll see more queens from those regions, and places that have yet to appear on versus the world like Espana, Italia or France. The second place goes obviously to the UK, represented by Cheryl Hall, Bag of Chips, Blue Height Ranger, Vanity Milan and Victoria Scone, placing 8th, 3rd slash 4th, 1st, 5th and 3rd slash 4th respectively, with an average of 4.2. The UK actually did pretty solid on both seasons, the only queen that really underperformed here was Cheryl, but hey. Girl, if the price is right, I might be on that show, who bloody knows? <laughs> and finally, to nobody's surprise, in the first place is the US of A, represented by Jujubi, Mohart, Silky at McGinnash, and the legend Raja O'Hara, who placed 3rd slash 4th, 2nd, 2nd and 1st, with a breathtaking average of 2.125. The consistency is unmatched, but to be fair, for each of them it was their third time around, or in Juju's case, 4th, they were definitely ready to slay. So far, they are the only country to have everyone reach the end, but if USA vs the world happens, I'm expecting that will no longer be the case. So here is the ranking in full. Now if you're not a big maths nerd, the next part might be a little complicated, but if you want to know how each country did more so in the challenges, this part is definitely more for you. But first, more things we need to agree on. Firstly, I'm gonna use the 0 to 6 point system here, also counting mini challenges. For the lip sync for the crown, queens receive 5 points for winning the lip sync and an additional point if they win the season. It's the same point system as used on the Yuki's channel, to whom I don't think any introduction is needed. Secondly, the placements. For Canada, I'm just gonna go with the wiki, since the placements there seem to be pretty credible, but for UK vs the world, I am actually gonna count Blue and Moa's low for episodes 1 and 2. Yes, I know that Vicky says otherwise, but first of all, 
proportions. And second of all, Bag and Pangina both received much more critiques than Blue and Mo, and even if I counted them as high, the ranking doesn't really change. As to how I counted these, let's just use an example. So let's take an imaginary country that had two queens. One queen had competed in 4 episodes and earned 15 points, while the other one competed in 6 and earned 20. I summed up the points earned, so 45, and divided it by the amount of episodes they competed on, 10. So their country average is 3.5. I know this is a flawed system, but the only better system I could come up with would be to divide each queen's score with the maximum amount of episodes. But that would automatically put countries with more queens more at a disadvantage than they already are, at least in this ranking. So the last in the ranking is New Zealand with Anita. Was helping Anita's PP just slightly is her win in the breeding mini challenge. So her score is 1.3 recurring. But overall, her placement here isn't surprising. In the second to last place, quite surprisingly, is the UK. Now, on the screen you can see each queen's PPE score, but their average is 2.52, which is actually really low. I think the main problem for the UK is that only one queen that reached the finale managed to win their lip sync in the SmackDown, so queens like Victoria and Baga have lower PPE as a result. Now, if I were to keep blue as high, the score of the UK would have been 2.6, which is also the score of our next country, Holland. Now, even if that were the case, for me Holland would have still won since they were only given a single chance so far. The Netherlands PPE is 2.6, the same as Janie's, which is actually pretty good. Now, in the third place is actually Canada, with a pretty solid PPE of 2.73, where 3 is a recurring number. Now, Canada is helped heavily by the way I count. Since most of their queens have only competed in 3 or less episodes, Rita being the only one to make it further, and her PPE is 3, which is larger than the average. Obviously, Isis and Jimbo are the real carries here. Jimbo with her two top 2 placements, and since Isis was never eliminated but quit, her PP is much larger than the rest. Honestly, while Canada might easily be doors in the placements, most of the queens here are considered robbed, so it all balances itself out. In the second place is the US. Now, first the kind of worms that is, if you're not in the top, you're in the bottom. For UK vs the World Snatch Game, Bo and Juju were given better critiques than Janie and Pagina. But since we had a bottom 4, everybody received only 1 point. Now we could just go with that, and that's the number you can see here. But we can also pretend that bottom 4 never happened, and Mo was high and Juju was just low. And that's the number you see here. Either way, their average is higher than Canada and lower than the first place. What's also helping the US here is that everyone has won or placed at least in the top 2. And since everyone except Juju won their finale lip sync, they get plenty of points for that. And finally, in the first place, to nobody's surprise, is Thailand with its lovely co-host Pangina Hills. Pangina has the PPE of 4, which is, alongside Raja and Isis, the highest PPE of the spin-off thus far. Oh boy, that was a lot. Here's the ranking, here's the table of how much better or worse countries did when looking at their PPEs instead. All the math done for the video should be in the description unless I forgot. Tell me how horrible are my math's opinions in the comments. You can of course like and subscribe. If you want to, I can force you realistically. And since we have just entered a new year, I would like to wish everyone that season 15 won't be shit. Hashtag Team Sasha, Irene and Lex Noir.